<laughs> but this is old camera. And this is not a spring chick. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to do something a little bit different that you generally don't see on iReport. We're going to talk about why movies are made. Because oh. we have been attending, uh, we've been attending screenings for like two, three months. So we've got more screenings coming out of us. But because um, movies are made to make money, movies are made to go after awards, and movies are made to lose money. And if you, I know a lot of you are like scratching your heads. You didn't realize that. Yeah, because yeah. Um, um, because what happens is is a lot of people uh, have money. That they basically they make too much money and they have to have a tax deduction so they'll invest in movie projects. And the problem is when these things screw up is like when a movie like Reds is made and the movie not only makes money it wins like an armload of Oscars mm -hmm. because they do it too well. I mean, for instance, Hugo is going to be one of the biggest money losers. Actually, the biggest money loser in history is Mars Needs Women. And he made no money. Mars Needs Women. Mars Needs Women, which was an animated thing for Disney, and Disney basically was not happy with that movie. I can understand why. Right. But they, like, $150 million and made like about a million something. Are you like serious? That. It really tanked. But um, Hugo, cost, really tanked. Hugo cost $170 plus million dollars, and it's going to co probably come in before. It, it's going to win Oscars. I mean, it's, it's a gimme now. It's up for Best Picture, Best Direction, Best Director, Best... Art direction, best everything you think of, it's going to walk away probably with four to five Oscars. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to lose money because the movie is a beautiful movie. But the story sucks like hell. You know, it's not a children's movie, it's an adult. It's an adult homage to George Melies. And it should never have been made at $170 million. Never. But, um, that was a fantasy. Portion. That was a fantasy. Yeah, that was a child's fantasy. <laughs> well, they said it was a. Ch I heard it said it was. It's been known as a children's fantasy because he didn't kill people and there was no blood anywhere and there's no sex and no cussing. There is holding hands between a boy and a girl though. There's no cussing. No cussing. I mean, we're telling it is. That's his idea of a children's movie. It, not, not to be insulting, the man made a beautiful movie. It's a beautiful movie. They said it quite possibly is one of the most beautiful movies ever made. I mean, you look at Lawrence of Arabia, you look at Dr. Zhivago, and then you look at Hugo, and you're seeing a movie. But we're, this is not a review on Hugo, though. No, it's not, a, but this we're talking about, about the the Hugo industry. was a movie made to make money and to win awards. Ah. There's there, also movies that. Well, for example, Clint Eastwood is famous for movies that are made to win awards. They're made to make awards because they don't cost a lot of money and they're basically made, if you work on an Eastwood movie, you work on a movie you know is going to get nominations and that's the reason for working on an Eastwood movie at a lower rate. Mm -hmm. But there are movies that are strictly made, low, uh, independent movies made to win awards and for no other purpose than to win awards because they have no, they have no reason for being. As we've been to a lot of those. And I was talking to a producer. I said, you know, sometimes you watch a movie and wonder why it was made. And, and he was laughing at with me. And I said, yeah, and sometimes you watch a movie and you think, hmm, did that happen because they ran out of money? Did that happen because you were trying to make a point? Oh, <laughs> did that I mean, happen because? I know. I, I, get in, I got into a big, a big Facebook discussion like, I, you know, we, 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 were, we were doing doing the movies that we've been to an awful lot of Oscar screens, but people actually put a hell of a lot of work into them, folks. I mean, they really the, do. The artists have a lot of work put into that movie, and there was actually sound everywhere, you know, and The Descendants had a film crew, and uh, and The Warriors. I mean, these are not bad movies. They met them win awards. There's a difference between a movie that, uh, okay, uh, my father had the benefit, my father had the, um, you know, the great chance to, to meet George M. Cohan. George M. Cohan, you know, basically he told my, you know, he told everybody, he said, son, there's only one reason for working in the business because it is show business. And why the show must go on? Because you don't get paid unless it goes on. George M. Cohan, you know, knew the value of a buck. <laughs> and, but, um, but, that we're getting around to the fact that, you know, like I said, you make movies to make money, you make movies to win awards, and then you make movies to lose money. But there are not movies that are meant to lose money and win awards until now. And that we know of one that being, that there, we know of a, of a small company that's getting ready to make an Oscar run for 214. Mm -hmm. You say, why 214? Because you have, to, the, um, you have to get it into the bloody film festivals. You have to enter the film festivals like six months before the movie 
uh, is even finished in order to get the thing out. And you've got like, you have to get a screener into people's hands like three months before the festival or something to get approval for it. But, um, and you make, this, you know, you know the movie's gonna, it's basically, it's meant to be a, it's meant to be the biggest money loser in the history of the industry. Told you, because uh, we're in a time where the, pre okay, this is the way it works. Um, no, it's not being upset with the president because the Republicans are just as bad as our president. That if you have it, they're going to take it from you. So what you need to do is to put it somewhere that, you know, you have to understand tax. I have no idea how these things work, but I do know that if you invest money, if you have too much money, you have to lose money, but you want to lose money in something that you that, can have fun with. That you can have fun with. A lot of people basically would have simply, you know, they'll put, they know the housing industry is going backwards, so they go invest in the housing industry and, then, and hope that the business won't go up all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Or you, you invest in gold uh, when gold is up, knowing that gold is going to go down. If the gold goes back up again above what you pay, you lose your shirt. So, but movies of long time, uh, movies have a long history of people making investments in movies to basically lose the money. It's not sheltering it, they want to lose the money. I mean, okay, her, her father was a movie producer. Mm -hmm. Pure and simple, he was a movie producer. And the thing finally made money. <laughs> it did make money. We're actually surprised we ain't got any money back on it. Yeah, but it did make money. They said, and why did he do it? He wanted to meet Raquel Welsh. He wanted to meet Raquel Welsh. And you know, that it had, it basically, it was a it was a movie basically that was meant for one purpose and people will do and they'll invest in a purpose. Like I said, you have a lot of people that make put little amounts of money in the movies so that they can get their name on the credits and then find out that the the uh, the industry won't allow your name on a credit. So that's why they have credit. They you know that when you say you're producer, well. Uh, that doesn't get up there. It sort of gets in that stuff down bottom. That, you know, the credits go on for ten minutes, and everybody's worked on the movie, so you can say like, and anybody know that Johnny Depp was involved in Hugo? Mm -hmm. You won't know that Johnny Depp was involved in Hugo because his name has just been eradicated by the producer oh, Bill and, the, and the Oscar people. What's the deal with because that? He, we saw it on the credits. Because it, it's a non-approved. He's not approved as a producer. So. So they they had simply his name has been stricken. From the fact, even though that he was probably responsible for the movie being made. I know. So, but um, but this is a, you know the, the, you know it, like I said, it's just it's a weird industry where you can make money by losing money, but you have to guarantee you're going to lose money, unlike Reds. And there, there is the the, the the flip of the switch. Most people that make make movies to lose money are like, um, you know, Mel Brooks people and the producers. They don't realize that if you don't do it right, you end up making money. Because you never know what somebody is going to be attracted to in the film industry. So um, it, it's just like, it also has to do with timing. Um, like Mel Brooks' producer starring Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane was made into a feature film. It came out at the wrong time of year. I think it came out against Titanic. Is it really? Yeah, and uh, it went nowhere because Titanic and uh, and Pierce Brosnan and James Bond ate the box office. They just it did well it. on Broadway. It did well it on Broadway with the and timing. And timing has happened it too. For instance, if you're doing a movie that's an action adventure, you don't bring it out in the winter season generally because it's a drama part of the year. And if you, you're doing a horror film, don't bring it out at Christmas or Valentine's Day because no one's going to come watch it. <laughs> so it's uh, there are more opportunities to lose money in a motion picture than there are in a Broadway play. Because it, 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 the logistics is, I mean, I, would, I, I, I got, I was lucky, I mean, I was young, I got to attend some classes in college that Jack L. Warner was the guest. He was sort of like, oh, the, really? he was like the resident, you know, person there because, you know, he was no longer really functioning his head, but he liked to tell people about, you know, he said, if you got a quarter, I want that quarter, I don't care who they want. Mm -hmm. That was his philosophy, you know, I'll have a Jew in my theaters. You know, actually, I little black man in my theater, a Jew in my theaters, but if they got a quarter, I don't care who the hell they are. So, but um, he would tell us about um, uh, uh, about things, and and he would explain he explained the industry because the way the distribution system is, that you have to make three times basically the estimate is three times the cost of your movie to break even. Mm -hmm. So if you make a movie today for a hundred million dollars, 
you have to make 300 million to break even. And if you look at the statistics, what are there, 40, 50 movies a year that make 300 million dollars? Yeah, and, not that many. And there's uh, 200 movies that cost 100 million to make, which means they're all destined to lose money. But these are, for the most part, all movies that are meant to make money. Yeah. Because people are afraid today, uh, you know, you really have to pick up, you want to pick a movie that plays in one theater and basically loses $40 million, which doesn't happen that often because sometimes you'll put, you know, what happens is you'll say, well, you know, Samantha James gets completely naked for the first time in this movie. They say, oh my God, Samantha James is completely naked? What's the name of the movie? And all of a sudden, the internet says, Samantha James is completely naked in this movie. And then all of a sudden, people start coming into the theater to see Samantha James completely naked. And, said, and you see the producer, oh, God, that movie's going to make money. Mm -hmm. Who the hell put Samantha James in the movie? <laughs>